Okay, define and calculate impulse and work. Impulse is 7.1, work is 7.2. Okay, so, of course, because it makes perfect sense, uh, impulse, the letter that we use for that is J. Unlucky again. Um, impulse is defined as your change in momentum, uh, but you can define it a whole bunch of other ways um, with a little bit of careful. Uh, force times the change in time, um, more properly, uh, the integral force over time. This one we're not going to use in this, but just so you know. Um, you can define it as the mass multiplied by the change in velocity, because that's essentially what change in momentum is, um, so long as your mass is constant throughout everything, which makes sense for one body, but sometimes if you've got pieces flying off, not so relevant. Um, since we've got force multiplied by change in time, that gives rise to the units, newton seconds. Not newtons per second, newton seconds multiplying. Cool. So what have I got here? I've got a force uh, time uh, graph. Uh, specifically, I'm oversimplifying slightly. I'll leave the uh, original uh, data image uh, on Compass if you're curious, um, but I've tried to keep the uh, basics of it pretty similar. Keeping in mind, uh, oh, by the way, this is for a car crash. Um, so, we're roughly 50 uh, uh, G is fatal to humans, pretty much in any scenario. There are a couple technicalities for that, but pretty well, if you're ever suffering 50 G, you're dead. Cool. Um, so obviously we want to avoid doing that. We are going to have uh, 80 kilogram person, and I'm gonna say that this just barely kills the person. Um, and if we're traveling at about 50 to 60 kilometers an hour, yeah, well, so don't crash. Um, that's without airbags and all the rest of it. So, okay, how much force is this? Because we need a number for this force. All right, well, let's let G be 10, just for simplicity, because obviously these are nice round numbers. So this is gonna be 500 for our acceleration. We've got a mass of 80, okay. So what do we get? 500, oops, multiply it by 80 is what, 40 and then one, two, three extra zeros. Uh, and this is newtons now. Cool, so I've got a force of 40,000 newtons as our peak force. Oh dear. Cool, 40,000 newtons, that's gonna kill ya. All right, well, what I'd like to know is what's the impulse that we're suffering here? All right, well, impulse is force multiplied by time. Well, I've got my force, I've got my time. Well. It's not a matter of 0.1 times this, because that's not what I'm really after, particularly if you think about integrals. What we really care about is all this area in here. Well, conveniently, we've got a nice triangle in there. So you can go half base times height if you want, or whichever other version you particularly care for. Let's do that. Half base is, oh, sorry, uh, J first. Half base of 0.2 times height of 40,000. Q equals zero point one is four thousand, I believe, and uh, newton seconds. Cool. So we've got four thousand newton seconds of impulse. All right. Well, that is a bit of more of a fiddly number to think about by itself because that doesn't really necessarily tell us anything. What we really worried about was this peak force, right? Because that's telling us, oh, we did. Well, is there a way that we could bring this down? Well, yeah, if you smash yourself into a, 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 the steering wheel when you're driving along and you hit the wall and then you go bash, that's really going to hurt and you're going to be dead. So, unsurprisingly, we've got seatbelts and airbags and a whole bunch of other stuff. ABS and all the rest of it also helps, but we'll think about those for now. Cool, what do those things do and why do they help? Well. Seatbelt is designed to hopefully stop your face from smashing into the uh, steering wheel because if that happens you have a very sudden and abrupt deceleration or negative acceleration depending on which way you want to uh, look at it. And the airbag means that you slowly uh, disperse the energy over more time. So let's see if we can do something with this. Our impulse isn't going to change, or at least we'll assume that it won't change. What we can do, though, is spread out this damage, or sorry, spread out uh, this impulse. 
over more time. So, if I can do the following. Cool, let's take a look at this guy. So, now we've got this area. Alright, well, still same idea. Half base, which is now 0 0.4, times our height is going to still equal our same impulse from before. So I'll put that back in purple. 4,000 seconds. Brilliant. <coughs> so we've got the new, and actually I'll change this into F, sorry, not F, the height, because we're not talking about height, we're just talking about the height of the graph. It's the height of the triangle that I'm talking about. This force uh, max, we'll say, which is about there. Cool. So we've got 4,000 dividing by these guys, divide by a half times by 0.4, or equal force max. Handy dandy calculators. There he is. 4,000 divided by bracket, 0.5 times 0.4, close bracket, gives me 20,000. Uh, now, is that particularly surprising that we get 20,000? Well, no, because we've had the exact same area as before, because that area is representing that impulse, and we've just doubled the time that we took to smash our faces in. So the peak force now, half as high, makes a fair deal amount of sense. Great. So, based on that same line of logic, eventually we're going to end up back down at roughly 25 Gs. Now, is that fatal? Well, it still technically could be, depending on what happens, particularly if you've got heart problems or anything else. But, now we just are really hurt instead of very dead. So, that's the basic idea. So with impulse, it's just the change in momentum, um, or alternately, the force multiplied by the change in time. So it's a nice thing. Uh, generally, your impulse will stay the same in any scenario, unless you're bleeding off energy into something, which most of the time for this subject won't happen. So that's impulse. Pretty nice and straightforward. Cool. Over to work. <coughs> Excuse me. Cool. So, as we had before, work equals force times displacement. Um, I'm adding in an extra term here, which I'll get to later. As always, work was in joules, or alternately, since we've got force times displacement, newtons times metres. Brilliant. Uh, cos of an angle is always just a pure number, so it doesn't get its own unit. It's just a pure number. Brilliant. So I've got little Timmy here, <coughs> pulling along his wagon. The wheels have fallen off and it's a garbage wagon. It's just a box, essentially. Uh, we'll say it's a wooden box pulling along the carpet. And that took me forever to find data for it, but it's roughly a coefficient of friction of 0 0.3. It varies between 0 0.2 and 0.4-ish. Um, but that's that. I'll put this back down so I can write. Okay. Cool. Little Timmy's going to pull on this thing with a force of 60 newtons. However, Little Timmy is not so bright, and he's going to be pulling it at an angle of 40 degrees, rather than pulling it straight along. Um, the mass of this uh, object is 20 kilograms. Okay, great. He's going to uh, pull it 5 metres. What I want to know is how much work is he doing? Okay. Well, Little Tim is going to get pretty uh, tired unnecessarily because he's wasting a whole lot of uh, energy, but that's his problem. So, let's calculate some things. Unsurprisingly, as always, start with a diagram, conveniently already supplied, and then put in your uh, forces. So. Almost always everyone starts with force grav, force normal, so we're pulling it this way, so the friction will be that way, force friction, and we've got going up this string, which I'm going to put as from there. Uh, force tension. Beautiful. Okay. Well, let's calculate some things going on here. Hmm. Well, force grab. Mg. 
Great, so we've got, uh, what was my M? 20. And for simplicity, I'm just going to say, uh, do I want to leave it as J? Yeah, I'll leave it as J. Leave it as alphabetical. We might change that into a 10 later, depending on how we're feeling. Cool, okay, great. Uh, oh, did I put in how? Uh, yes, I did. Cool. Okay, FT we've already got. Fantastic. Now, is force of gravity equal to normal force in this case? Well, no, because we've got this guy stuffing us. Well, that's irritating. So, what else can we figure out? Well, I can't do friction until I know the normal. So, I guess I'd better fiddle around with this. I need to break it up into components, which we've done before. Uh, our angle here was, what was it? 40, so we've got, we'll drop it over here. Force T. This is 40, go. Cool. So, opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, actually, we'll write it over here. Sine of 40 is opposite, so what do we call this? FT in the y direction, FT in the x direction. Uh, equals FT in the y over FT. Oops, FT. Cos 40 equals FT in the x over FT. Brilliant. So if I want just FT in the go Y, this one, so we'll take sine. So FT in the Y direction is going to be FT multiplied sine 40. Cool. Well, FT was 60. Sine of 40 is some terrible number. So if I'm in radians, change into degrees. So, 40 is 64278, we'll say 6428, roughly. 4428, roughly. 6428, yep. Cool, okay, which is roughly 38.567. Oh, that's annoying, we'll call that a 3. Beautiful, beautiful, yes. Good. Okay, so that's our force going that away. Well, why did we do that one? We could have done uh, FX and maybe we will. Yeah, we might also do it right now. While we're here, why not? Cool. Uh, so that's FT, oops, FT multiplied by cos 40 equals 60 by cos 40. 0 0.7664 and 45.962 irritating 7. Beautiful. So we've got that. Okay. So now I know how much force I'm applying this way and I know how much is this way. I don't know how much is up for normal but I do know this vertical component now. So I've got that vertical component, I've got that horizontal component. Well, this thing's not going off into orbit or getting turned into the ground, it's just moving along the ground. So all my verticals and, yeah, all my verticals should sum to zero. So, these two are both up, that one's the only one down. So, 20G should be equaling uh, force Y plus Fn. And at this point we're going to have to trade out that G for a 9.8. So, go back up, still the 38 point whatever. Yep. And then do 20 times 9.8 minus that guy gives us Fn roughly 157.4327 Newtons. Beautiful. Yeah, I should probably have Newtons on the end of this too. Okay. And this guy as well. Why not? Uh, yeah, why not? Okay. Beautiful. So we've got all these forces. Fantastic. Well, <coughs> I've got all my verticals all sorted. Fantastic. 
I still need these horizontals. Well, now that I've got my normal, I can figure out my friction. Friction is uh, mu multiplied by force normal, which is going to be equal, was it 0 0.3? 0 0.3, multiply garbage number, 157.4327-ish, which gives me some terrible number, uh, 0.3 times this, yes is 47.2298. Cool. So now we've got a force of friction. Fantastic. All right. Well. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, good. I made that too high, didn't I? Uh, force finish. Yep. Okay. Uh, little Timmy's going to need some help. So we're going to change that, and we'll pick the lower end. So we'll pick 0 0.2. Okay. Uh, change that into 0 0.2. And, uh, gives me 31. There we go. Now we can actually pull the thing. Poor little Timmy's weak. Now we're pulling on the units. Cool. So we've got friction pulling us back 31 and a half ish. We're pulling forward at 45, almost 46. Cool. So we want a net force. Which what colour should we do this in? Purple since we haven't used it. Force net on the uh, wheelbarrowy thing. Is going to be 45 point garbage of FTX minus the uh, FF, which is roughly, hopefully, I wish any buttons on this. Oh, I did, but I'm always safe. 45, where's that? 45, 9, 6, yep, minus off, last one, 31, etc. Gives us roughly 14 and a half. 4, 7, 6, 1. Newton. Fantastic, okay. <coughs> so we figured out how much net force we've got. All of that's old stuff, but always helps have another uh, example of it. Great. Well, hmm. What's happening here? Well, I've got this being pulled in this direction, and it's being pulled for five meters. So at the end of the day, our work is just going to be uh, our force net that guy multiplied by the distance that we travel, which is going to be this fourteen whatever times by the. Uh, 5, so 14.4761, blah, 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 multiply it by a distance of 5, which we put in black, multiply it by 5, gives me, oh, let's do this in black then, that's an S, and this is a 5. Uh, equals to times over 5, yes it is, 72.3801 uh, joules, because we're doing work. Fantastic, so that's how much work he's doing on the box. Okay. Well, hang on, we didn't use this. What's that talking about? Well, let's give it a go, see what happens. So we've got Work equals original force, 60, multiplied by distance, 5, multiplied by cos of 40. Well, let's see what that turns out to be. 60 multiplied by 5, multiplied by cos 40, gives 229.8133 joules. Well, these are clearly very different numbers. What's going on here? Well, let's consider something. 
this friction had to have been taking up energy here. Hmm, is some amount of work being wasted by that? Well, let's do work related to friction. So I've got this. Oh, actually, let's just call it F. FF. So the for ooh. force friction multiplied by displacement. Okay. Well, that's the 31 point, etc. Multiplying by 5, that gives me 157.4327. Uh, joules. Hmm. Well, what happens if I do this minus that? So now we've got work by Timmy, minus off. The work related to friction gives us 229 minus 157. Well, that ends up equaling 72.3806 if I round up. There we go. Hmm, well, that look, number looks remarkably familiar. So, what's happened? You can do this a couple of different ways. Unsurprisingly, it should be consistent no matter which way you go. So, let's think about what these numbers are meaning though. Well, clearly, the work on the box is just the 72-ish joules. So that's how much energy it took to move the box from here to there. However, there's friction involved. And so, <coughs> excuse me, and so, friction is wasting some energy. Now, Timmy's providing a hell of a lot of energy here at almost 230. Most of it is being totally frivolously wasted, right? It's being wasted on friction. Now, typically you don't think of uh, friction as doing work per, per se, but in, you flip it into uh, thinking about energy, you can think about, oh, hang on, if I'm wasting energy, because this is joules, what's friction in terms of energy? Well, it's usually heat energy or sound or some other loss in that case. So that's what's going on. We've got a large component going being wasted into just heating up other things, like heating up the carpet, heating up the actual box itself, um, potentially making sound and vibrating the air molecules all around. The actual physical moving this from one location to the other location only took 72-ish joules, but all the other garbage that came along with it, that ends up being 157. Damn. So that's it. So both of these are pretty straightforward. There's not that much uh, uh, to them, particularly given uh, everything else we've done before. It's mostly just a little bit of accounting. It's not the worst thing in the world, but as always, if you get stuck on anything, do email me. Uh, until then, I'll hope that you're doing well. Cheerio!